Hi, George here again. And what I've got with me is my friend, the Avita XL ventilator meat by Draeger Corporation. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the external features of this ventilator prior to doing the pre-use check on it. So bear with me, I'll get the camera off the tripod. It was successful last time. Let's see if we're successful again. There we go. Came off rather easily. Okay, so let's take a look at the ventilator. This is the main screen right over here of the XL. You can see that it's pretty much a touch screen because you can't really see anything except my reflection inside there. So a touch screen means you select what you need to and then set the value with this rotary knob right over here. This is the select the value knob and you push it to confirm the value. And that's got a bunch of uh, buttons here that you can press for specific functions like uh, arm, alarm silence, uh, alarm limits, uh, the ventilator settings which brings up your modes menu, etc. Et so the screen itself, and you'll become very, very familiar with the screens once you start using it. Now the inlet and outlet of the ventilator are right over here. This one here is your inlet, okay? So this is where the gas comes out of the ventilator. And if you look right over here, that's a port for hooking up oxygen tubing to, or air tubing, so that you can run a nebulizer with this device right off the ventilator. So some of that volume the patient's gonna get and it could, adjust, it could affect the uh, ventilation settings that you have on your ventilator when you run this internal nebulizer. So it might or might not. So there's your internal nebulizer built right in. Anyways, the gas comes out of there, goes into your humidifier where it picks up heat, and of course with the blue tubing there, goes all the way to the patient Y, standard patient Y up there. Gas comes back to the ventilator, to the expiratory port or the exhalation port. That's this thing right over here. Now another piece of that puzzle is where the flow transducer is located. And the flow transducer is located right behind this door. So if you push down on that, that's where the flow transducer is. And the flow transducer is that clear tube that you see right over there. Now to successfully remove this without breaking it, what you need to do is slide this over to the left like that and then pull it out. And when you're putting it back in, say it's a brand new flow transducer, line it up. You can kind of see it's got that configuration right over there. And this pin configuration, there let's go, pin, pin configuration on that flow transducer thing. Make sure it's lined up properly. It's kind of hard to do with one hand and holding the device at the same time, the camera at the same time. Line it up, push it in, and then slide it back in, close the door <clears throat> when you're done. Okay. Now I want to take this exhalation block off, this exhalation manifold off, so you can get a chance to see, see how that's done. Simply again pull this down, slide this over to the left, and pull it out. Then what you need to do, disconnect the expiratory hose, the exhalation hose. See this unlocking thing right over here? There's a little tab right there that you need to push over. That unlocks this block and then you can remove it. So yeah, with one hand again it's difficult to do. Push and then pull this out and it comes out. So this is the exhalation block right over here or the exhalation manifold. <clears throat> this would be sent out for cleaning between patient use as well. Okay now to place this in simply hold it like this right go back to your ventilator Line it up here and continue to push it in until you hear the click. When you hear that click, this locking mechanism locks this in place so it's good to go. It's in there fairly securely. <clears throat> now simply take your flow transducer, this thing right over here, make sure it's slid over to the left, line it up, push it in, push it to the right. It should seal inside here nicely and then close this door if it's got a door on there. Okay, so that's the exhalation block. Once you've done that, take your expiratory tubing, exhalation tubing, and place it on like so. Okay. On the side, right over here, we've got the support arm for the circuit, just a standard type of support arm. Nothing else really on this side, except to show you that we've got this little blue thing here, and there's one on the opposite side. So if you wanted to change the angle that the monitor was that if you want to change it in whatever way you'd have to push this in 
and the one on the other side at the exact same time, and then you can tilt the monitor one way or the other for ease of use or for less glare or what have you. Going to the back of the ventilator, not much here. Fan here for cooling, don't put your fingers in there or don't try to uh, sharpen your pencils if you've got one. Bunch of stuff for audiovisual. Um, we do have what's called the CO2 port right here or um, connection right over here because with this particular ventilator we can actually monitor end tidal CO2 with this port and that end tidal CO2 monitoring device that you'd put uh, close to the endotracheal tube. So it's got its own cuvette on it right in here <coughs> that you would attach the adapter that goes on the endotracheal tube uh, or the circuit and you can uh, monitor the end tidal CO2 values as you ventilate the patient and specific again with sp this ventilator. So that is a specific feature with this uh, Evita XL ventilator. I'll zoom out again. This is the stand of the ventilator and on the stand of the ventilator you can see it's got this little holder right over here that you can put your electrical hoses on as well as your gas hoses for medical air, medical oxygen and then the base of the device as well. It's got wheels on it so make sure again that the wheels are locked in place. Also has a couple little slots here for storage. You can put some things in there like sandwiches you want to keep warm. Um, maybe you might want to toast a, a bagel or something. No, I'm just kidding. You can't toast anything in there. Don't put any food near these ventilators. Don't put any water in there to keep warm or any, anything else. It's just simply a storage area. On this side, not much with the ventilator. We've got this little bracket right here that holds our water bag for inhalation purposes. All right, so that's the water that goes to the humidifier down there. And that's pretty well about it. The Evita XL ventilator. Oh, we did forget one thing on the back. Let's go to the back. How do you turn this thing on? Well, if you look on the front, there isn't really anything here that alludes to where you turn the sucker on. So instead of going round and round this ventilator trying to find where the on-off switch is, I'm going to show you where it is. The on-off switch is located right underneath this. So that's the back of the ventilator. So if you're looking at the back of the ventilator, it's the top left-hand corner. All you simply have to do is flick that up, and right behind there, there's your on-off switch. So you just push this in, and that turns the ventilator on. And then when you're done turning it on, let that go. It's a protection. Okay? Now, now that's pretty well all there is with the Evita, other than turning it on and doing the pre-use check and then setting it up for your patient. Okay, hope you found this video informative. If you haven't used an Evita before, specifically the Evita XL, I hope you got some value out of this. And what we're going to do is, uh, in one of the next videos is we're going to do the pre-use check on the Evita. Stay tuned for that one. If you like this video, thumbs up. Didn't like it, thumbs down. Give me some, just some suggestions how I can improve. And if you get a chance, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take care. Hope you have a great day. That's all for now. And I know where the remote is this time. <laughs>